Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 5th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Rob uh, went into some details how to figure out when a window system was last completely patched and the difficulty he ran into with a prior PowerShell script that he wrote for that purpose was that there may have been some individual patches like for example the servicing stack for Windows which uh, really just updates the update system itself that got installed in a particular month, but the cumulative updates that do install all the other patches are not installed. Now, of course, if you're just looking at the date, that's then not sufficient to figure out what patches were installed. So you actually need to then resolve the knowledge base numbers associated with the patch. And that's sort of what Rob goes into here, trying to figure out how to use PowerShell based on the knowledge base number to figure out if you're dealing with a cumulative patch or with one of these individual patches. Rob included a partial PowerShell script here as part of uh, the post, uh, but is asking for a little bit of feedback how to possibly uh, do this better. And of course, feel free to use uh, Rob's script for your own purposes. And talking about patches, Bleeping Computers a couple days ago uh, talked about how fake Windows updates are being used to distribute uh, ransomware. Wasn't really clear how they get advertised and really the locations they're downloaded from are really less than reputable. It's essentially sort of various sites and uh, sites that also peddle cracks for uh, games. So uh, not really sure why anybody would install it, but the file names are something like you know, system upgrade, Windows 10 and such. They have some uh, knowledge base number uh, attached to it. So certainly pass someone falls for it, uh, but of course you just should just let Windows download any updates itself. But well, sometimes ransomware needs updates and a new project uh, that goes under Malvol, uh, run by someone who used the pseudonym uh, Hyperlinks, is looking into vulnerabilities in malware in particular, ransomware, and found plenty of them. How much uh, they're useful really for defenders is a little bit questionable. Yes, there's a lot of DLL hijacking, so you could just uh, place DLLs in specific directories in order to essentially uh, do a denial of service against the ransomware once it gets installed. These uh, issues are typically roughly quickly fixed by ransomware gangs. It could also be used uh, by other attackers uh, to then exploit systems that are already infected with uh, some kind of malware. And we certainly have seen that where you sort of have parasitic attacks uh, that are taking advantage of vulnerabilities left behind by prior attackers. And at least twice already talked about the incident at GitHub where uh, Travis CI and Heroku tokens were used in order to get read access only to pri private GitHub repositories. Well, uh, overall, there wasn't really any clear resolution what exactly happened. Travis CI came out with a statement stating that it was really Heroku tokens, but Heroku, part of Salesforce, didn't really respond to that. Now Heroku states that it notified some of its customers via email that their credentials will have to be reissued. They need to reset passwords and also reset their keys. Not clear if this is because of a compromised Heroku or some weakness uh, with these particular uh, customers. Salesforce just states that uh, this is part of their continuing effort to enhance security and that any questions should be redirected at Heroku support. 
And then we got a number of patches from Cisco. The one critical patch, actually uh, three vulnerabilities, uh, but all affecting the Cisco Enterprise NFV infrastructure software. And uh, these vulnerabilities do allow virtual machine escape. They also do allow command injection. And then there is a for good measure and external entity injection vulnerability included. So in short, uh, these vulnerabilities can be used to completely compromise uh, this uh, software. Base CVSS score is 9.9 and uh, exploitation is considered uh, not too complex. And then we also uh, got a patch from F5 for its uh, big IP product. It affects the iControl REST API and can also lead to a complete system compromise. So better patch and as always, make sure that the control interfaces for these type of systems are not exposed to the world. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.